on this episode of Deep Fat Fried. These fighting rock stars just can't seem to get along. What? Would we even want them to? Hell no! Let's see them fight! Tonight, Fighting Boys Rock Stars Volume 2. It's Deep Fat Fried. Deep Fat Fried! Hi, everyone. It's your old pal Mickey here with a direct order. I mean, an option that you are strongly encouraged to take advantage of. You will click the link below. You will subscribe to the Pessimist Productions Patreon. I mean, (laughs) if you want to wink, wink, there's more content there than, well, you could swing a dead toddler at. Exclusive shows, exclusive streams, hours of exclusive content. Why aren't you clicking? Why aren't you subscribing to the Pessimist Productions Patreon? (laughs) You're making Mickey sad. I like this. I like uh, I like rock star feuds. It sucks that you you were the one that figured out that that was good de- deep fat fried material because I would totally steal it. No, I don't care if you steal it. I'd be like, boom, it. take it. Do it if you it's want. Mine. All right, fine. This is my episode. Yeah, now. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, TJ. So yeah, go I ahead. I don't care. <sighs> so TJ, without even looking at the document here, because obviously you're the biggest Pink Floyd fan of any of us, could you just let us know who we're looking at here? Looking at Pink Floyd. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so who's at the bottom? Let's go. Let's go clockwise from the bottom, TJ. All right. That's Floyd. That's Floyd. one next to him is Pink. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, this is actually a Pink Floyd in, in January 1968 from the only known photo shoot during the five months that all five members were together. Clockwise from the bottom uh, is David Gilmore, uh, Mason. I don't know Sid Barrett, uh, Roger Waters. I think it's Richard Wright. I think it's Fred Mason, if we're being, but um, I might be wrong. Obviously not the most famous member of Pink Floyd, (laughs) clearly. Yeah. Uh, So this feud is Pink Floyd, David Gilmore versus Roger Waters. Uh, Do you guys have any familiarity with this at all? I know a little bit. Yeah, I I know that there was a feud. I don't know any of the details about it. I know that they, um, I, I think it's like been pretty rough like to this day right like they're not yeah i would say that's accurate there's not been like a reconciliation of any kind i know that you know was it like i may be wrong about this i remember my stepdad he's a huge pink floyd fan the reason that i know all about this yeah he knows and i remember him grousing about this back when i was a teenager did it have something to do with like Roger Waters performing solo shows where he was performing Pink Floyd songs and David Gilmore wasn't getting a cut. Uh, That's something uh, that I've not heard that specifically, but that is probably very possible. Waters I mean, continues to perform Pink Floyd songs yeah, well, as, of course. As, as a solo act to this day. So um, I would probably defer to hit your stepdad's knowledge on that because obviously him being an old school fan, he probably heard all the gossip. Don't back defer in the day. to his knowledge because it's secondhand telephone knowledge from oh, when okay, I was a teenager well, and a stoner. I thought, so. Okay, I thought I thought that you he was like yeah, ultra Pink Floyd fan. Okay. No, he's not he super is, fan. but I'm not. I may not be relaying it properly as <laughs> oh, well. As okay, I'm. well, fair enough. Fair enough. So the, the messenger, shoot the messenger. I got right. you. Uh, so obviously, despite their huge success, Pink Floyd's Roger Waters and David Gilmore have always shared a somewhat dysfunctional partnership. Waters has always been slightly hesitant towards the idea of collaboration, and much rather, you know, be the captain of his own ship, call his own shots. Of course, I mean, who isn't like that? Especially in these big rock bands, uh, Gilmore joined Pink Floyd in 1968. But as the years progressed, the two men were locked in a power struggle as their creative visions collided. And ultimately Roger Waters left the band in 1985. It's it. Well, so that backs up what I was saying then it's too many chiefs, not enough Indians, right? Roger Waters. 
<coughs> I mean, let's remember, they, it sounds like they was, functionally uh, had two different ideas for how the band was going to function. Right. For Roger and, Waters, uh, it was like, yeah, I do Pink Floyd, but I'm also Roger Waters, and I'm going to go out and do my own fucking thing and do march the beat of my own drummer and work on different projects. And David oh, Gilmore sure. was more like, like, look, this is what's buttering our bread. We need to be here. You know, it seems like just two different kind of visions. Well, I'll tell you, too. Another thing is that, you know, neither of these guys started off as the leader of this band. I mean... Sid That's Barrett true. was the the front man, the 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 brain behind Pink Floyd, yes, and just basically went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and faded off into the fucking Neverland. Well, yeah, I mean he did, but Pink Floyd like still like there was a few things released for him and done with him and like you know sure sure I'm just saying there like, was still an effect. Was no, it wasn't like a a bad breakup. It was like no, he, it was like literally like a lot of songs are actually about like wish you were here was about him. You know, it's yeah, like, like there's no. a lot of affection for him. So it's, it, that's more of a unique rock star like leaving a rock band thing, especially right. like a kind of founding. It was like he's member, you know, like and he's, he's having serious mental issues. He yeah, can't fucking do it precisely. But you know, uh, so neither of these guys, both these guys are probably like we need to step into this role. Well, and when the when the they king both have dies, different ideas about what that role fucking is, you know. Yeah, when the king like dies, Thrones, there's a war of secession or succession, right? So mm-hmm. there, are, there are a number of factions that feel like, well, I of, of course am the one that's going to carry the torch as the front man of Pink Floyd now, and here's my philosophy behind that. And of course, it it just sounds like it never got worked out between the two of these guys. Yeah, I don't think it ever did. Yeah, so even to this day. Uh, so David Gilmore, Nick Mason, and Roger Waters. Actually, I mean, uh, the preface this this is go, this goes back to 1984. This is like a very important dinner. These guys all met. So sorry, I should have uh, mentioned that first. But so David Gilmore, Nick Mason, Roger Waters, and Steve O'Rourke, who was a manager for Pink Floyd uh, at the time, met for dinner in 1984 to discuss their future. Uh, according to Mason, he and Gilmore left the restaurant thinking that life would quote uh, quote that life would could continue, and after Waters had finished. Uh, his uh, solo album, the, Pron, uh, the Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking, noting that Pink Floyd had had several hiatuses before. So they basically go to this dinner, and it's like, look, we're, we're, kind of, we're going to take a break kind of thing. Like, oh, and they're like, okay. But Pink right. Floyd's still going to continue, but we're going to take a break. Uh, however, Waters left under the misapprehension that Mason and Gilmore had accepted that Pink Floyd was finished. Right. I think he heard what he wanted to hear. Yeah, he heard what he wanted to hear. Like, this is done. This is a good meeting and everything. But, you know, the band is done. Like, I really like feel the like the other guys tried to pitch to him, like, let's take a little time off and come back together and keep going as Pink Floyd. And what he heard was, oh, yeah, go off and do your own thing, you know, without Sid Barrett. Yeah. Pink Floyd's pretty <laughs> over. Well, you know, I mean, like Roger Waters engineered, masterminded, I should say, because engineered has different meaning in music. Shit, yeah, but right. Yeah. He masterminded probably my favorite Pink Floyd albums. I like his era as the the the, the leader of the band probably the best. So you're talking but about uh, Animals, the, the Wall, wall, fucking, the wall. Um, uh, Dark, I think Dark Side, Side of the Moon. As well. um, you know, like his shit was always. I mean, his shit was the most commercially successful. Well, that's that. Uh, which, that I mean, for people that are casual fans of Pink Floyd, chances are the Pink Floyd they songs that they yeah, you're know thinking are off about. Of Rod, you're thinking albums. about Roger Waters. Fucking. It's album. called. It's called the the Waters era. Right. That's how it's defined. Right. Well, there's the Barrett era, the Waters era, and the Gilmore era. And I mean, I think Barrett and Gilmore both kind of had more, I okay, artistic integrity or whatever, for lack of a better term. I don't think either of them cared as much about huge commercial success and filling arenas and shit like that. I think they were just like all about the music. And I think waters was definitely about the music too, but there was a lot of him like, I'm a star and this is going to be a big concept. And this is going to fucking blow well, people's and, minds and shit. And, and well, and look at the brilliant fucking albums that that kind of churned out of the band. Absolutely. Uh, most yeah. no, I, love, I love those fucking albums. And I mean, uh, their most in, memorable uh, the wall albums. movie too. I mean, they made that. Yeah. Like, not to film. shit on David Gilmore, but nobody's talking about the division bell. You know what I mean? Right. Like, <laughs> dude, I, I like the division bell. I, I like, too, but, sure. like, but yeah, it's not, it's not When's the, wall? the last time somebody brought up the division bell j- before just now. In <laughs> yeah, your yeah, life. yeah. You know, um, I'm not trying to poop on it, but it's been a minute, right? Yeah, sure. No. So uh, Mason said that Waters later saw the meeting as duplicity rather than diplomacy and wrote in his memoir, clearly our communication skills were still troublingly non-existent. 
We left the restaurant with diametrically opposed views of what had been decided. So just a, a meeting where a meeting of bad communication where nothing yeah. actually where people left with very different notions of what had yeah. been said. Everybody <laughs> they had that came very to the different table, ideas. knew what they wanted to hear and somehow found a way to hear that during the discussion. <laughs> yeah. As people like, often find a way to do. Yeah. Uh, when Roger Waters left Pink Floyd, he tried to sue his former bandmates to stop them from using the name and obviously continuing the band on with Adam. And obviously this led to a vicious war of words and an aptly titled that you'll love what uh, Pink Floyd's next album title was a momentary lapse of reason. So right. you guys have probably heard this album, but yep. um, if you haven't, that was the name they chose. Uh, I think we all know why. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, how did one of Rock's greatest bands become embroiled in such a bitter power struggle? When Roger Waters announced that he'd left Pink Floyd in the wake of uh, the release of his first official solo album, The Prawns... Uh, the, I, I, I keep why do you keep saying... Why you keep I don't the prawns. know. The don't, Prawns and Cones I don't know of why. Hitchhiking. The Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking. I want to call it The Prawns of Hitchhiking. The Prawns! The Cons. Pass the Prawns, mate! <laughs> the Pros no, and dude, Cons Scott, of Scotty's a prawn from District fucking nine, dude. I must be. Oh, yeah. Fuck, dude. <laughs> It's, it's he's fucking he's dropping his skin suit. I'm about to. I it know pros a fucking and cons prone of when I see one, mate. In April 1984, and as departures spelled the end of the band, there was no sense of surprise in the music press. But the news was all but shrugged off. Shrugged off by everyone, of, of course, except for David Gilmour. And as if waiting for the right moment to strike, Gilmour to it on his own solo album. It's like, hey, you can make, hey, Roger, you can make a solo album. Guess what? I'm going to make a solo album, too. My solo album and your solo album. Yeah, so it's like now they're in a pissing contest, of course. Uh, 94 is About Face. Which one sold more, do you know? I don't know that, actually. Okay. Uh, playing theater shows that relied heavily on his new material. He then sat back and watched as Waters launch a solo tour that contained many Floyd songs performed ostensibly conceptually <laughs> style Floyd-style show. Yeah. So Waters Which Roger Waters does this day. So Gilmore's like, I'm gonna tour on my Roger on, on my Dave Gilmore material. And Roger Waters is like, I'm touring on the Pink Floyd catalog, bitch. So we know who had the more successful tour for sure. Uh, so the commercial results for actually, I guess it does have it here. Uh, it doesn't have exact sales figures though. Uh, the commercial results for both men were similar: modest chart success, a gold record in the U.S. for Waters, a gold record in the U.K. for Gilmore. And select audiences for the shows. Gotcha. So basically, both of them, it's, it's kind of like when System of a Down split off into like Surge Tankians doing his own thing and fucking um, whatever the other guy is. Scars on Broadway? Is doing Scars on Broadway. Or whatever it was. And it's I'm, like neither of them is met with the same success as they would have had just being System of a Down. No. It's just kind of like, oh, yeah, that's all right, I guess. But of course, they get to call the own shot, their own shots and make all the money. So they're like, it's great. You know, this is how it should be. Probably would have made more money be splitting it with Pink I, Floyd, though. I, I don't know. You're probably right, but whatever. Yeah. You know. uh, the next obvious step in a business sense was clear to most, especially Floyd's record company, EMI. Uh, the two men reunite and work together as Pink Floyd. For Waters, though, that would have been a backward step. For the equally stubborn but more pragmatic Gilmore, the suggestion that he make a new Pink Floyd album, in name at least, presented itself... A previously undreamed of prospect that of reforming Pink Floyd without Roger Waters. Mm. So it's like, huh? Yeah, so, I'll, I'll make another record. Roger says he's done though, right? So Roger Waters, so that the, the record label comes to them and is like, we want you guys to get back together and do a new Pink Floyd album because that's where the money's at. Yeah. And Roger Waters is like, that's a step back for me. And Gilmore's like, wait a minute, make a new Pink Floyd album. I like that part of the suggestion. Do it with Roger Waters. Don't like that part mm, yeah, so much. That Fuck part. that. I can become Pink Floyd. But Roger Waters at the same time was like kind of clear like this. Like he was stepping away. He was stepping back from that project. He's like, I don't, want, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. This is like a regression as far as I feel. And I mean, in that sense, it's like you can't really blame him. Like if you have like an amazing property like Pink Floyd, I like mean, these guys have been through this and created all this. Like, dude. I don't mean They're to not drag to drama into this situation, but I see the two controlling partners of the drunken peasants there on that picture, dude. I mean, it's the same kind of, I'm, I'm just saying it's the same kind of thing, right? Yeah. You had decided really? that like, whatever, like, I don't want to do DP anymore. Like yeah. it isn't, it isn't something that fulfills me all that much creatively. Yeah. And your partner decided like, 
dude, I want to keep doing fucking DP. I want to keep the name. And you guys yep. came to an, uh, an arrangement legally that, you know, facilitated that, right? Yeah. Same kind yeah. of shit. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, pretty much is it. I mean, if you want to, if you want to continue on doing this something, I mean, look, especially if you want to buy it, you know, or keep doing it in that whatever sense, like, that's up to you. Sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, so of course, the natural extension of this is let's have a lawsuit. They're going to, and so Roger Waters, of course, not going to be happy. Like, okay, Pink Floyd, just continue on without you. Don't worry about it, Roger. So Roger's like, no. Of course, Roger's like, no. I don't no. think so. Yeah, I mean, well, TJ, remember that they have that dinner they talk about, and his impression is Pink Floyd is done, and it's like, Pink Floyd is not done. You're just done with Pink Floyd. It's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like,